Yeah. Okay. We all are fighting with the COVID situation fiercely, whether it is India or Asia, Africa, Europe, or America, the struggle to persist is common. In the words of the chairperson of Biocon, Kiran Mazumdar Shah, she says, ultimately the greatest lesson that COVID-19 can teach humanity is that we are all in this together. Folks, as a concerned family member, Agrosa hopes well-being of everybody, each one of you, and request you all to follow all the COVID protocols and remain safe. I'm Naveen Labana, and I welcome you all to our new episode of Agrosa Talks, a dedicated show which gives enormous information on post-harvest equipments and related subjects. So please subscribe and like us on Facebook. Today, we have a very special guest, a new guest, uh, Mr. Raminder Gupta. He has an extensive experience in international post-harvest solutions. He has more than 11 years of experience with Agrosaw, and he is a specialist of East African region, countries like Uganda, uh, Rwanda, uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania. A very warm welcome to you, Raminder. Uh, thank you, Naveen. First of all, uh, <clears throat> I would like to thank you again for uh, inviting me on this forum and uh, to give me an opportunity to express my views and uh, to share my experience with my viewers. And right. uh, that's it. Yeah. Ramita, you have traveled to, to, to East African countries. You have traveled to these all countries, Uganda, Rwanda, and multiple times, I'm sure. Uh, one thing common which I personally find is that, you know, these countries and our country, uh, together we are developing countries. But there are many, many unique points also of this region. Uh, these countries have very different geographical conditions. They have different kind of soils, seasons. Uh, they have uh, uh, very different climatical conditions or rainfall. So we want to understand from you, uh, and this is my first question to Raminder, that what kind of agriculture setup does this region has, all these countries? Uh, if you could help us understand what kind of major crops and you know, what kind of seasonalities these countries have. Uh, definitely, like you said earlier, that uh, there is a lot of difference in the geographical diversity of uh, these East African region. Uh, right. Especially if we're talking about this type of soil and type of land over there. So yes. in particular situation in that one, like if you're talking about Uganda and Rwanda, uh, they are the highlands with having a good humidity content and uh, which will help us to uh, grow many other many types of crops over there, which needs mm -hmm. high moisture content and high uh, level of water over there. Uh, on the other hand, like if you talk about Tanzania and Kenya, then these are the coastal areas. So there are different crops are grown over there. And uh, okay. if you talk about Sudan and Ethiopia, that, that consists of uh, a large area of the dry lands. So there okay. are difference in the crops, depending upon the region to region, depending upon the type of soil, the type of environment, the type of rain, and the quantity of rain that they have on yearly basis. Uh, some area may have uh, low agriculture productivity because of uh, ill distribution of the rain content and those rains are uneven throughout the year. Okay. So this low production, like some area will have the low agriculture production that uh, may create some type of uh, subtype of food insecurity over there. Okay. That is also the content. Uh, the main crops, as you asked earlier, which are grown in this region, primarily are maize, then they have the sorghum, then they have millets, and uh, there are some regional crops also. Uh, mm -hmm. Kidney beans can be there, teff can be there, chickpeas are there, and mm -hmm. uh, some other pulses, they mm -hmm. are also grown over there. And mm -hmm. cowpea would be there. So these are the different crops they have uh, uh, based on the region. Some mm -hmm. crops have complete diversion that they can grow in the whole region. And mm -hmm. some, crows have, uh, some crops have specific regions to grow. Okay. So according to that, these all things depends upon the type of soil and uh, mm. the presence of humidity and uh, we can say agriculture supporting uh, structure. Okay, okay. So I mean, different regions have different crops. You, you named maize, you named beans, you know. Uh, yeah. I'm sure these all are staple crops uh, of, yep. the, of those regions. Yes. So uh, Ramita, how a crop travels from farmer 
to you know uh, the movement of crop i mean how does it happens uh, what, what is the supply chain right uh, i mean it is very important to understand the supply chain from field mm -hmm. to the plate how the what is the movement of the crop or or the grains uh, first of all most of the crops which are grown in these areas uh, are uh, we can say local market driven the production okay. of these crops are depending upon the demand of the market most of the okay. crops having local demand so okay. they produce only those crops they harvest in those crops primarily which having a local market over here which having a good okay. demand in that so okay. if you just talk about that what types of farmers are there or anything so this area is primarily having more uh, this is the area where uh, more than 50% of the population is living below poverty line so that results in somehow like a small level farmers or we can say the farmers having a small hold of the land okay. to grow their crops and to make the harvesting and all that thing right. so farmers are uh, small holds so they produce uh, one crop or two and they primarily wants to sell these crops to a middleman or the traders immediate traders which are having in the which are over there in the local town or in the big cities Uh, yeah. they don't know much about this uh, big market and the export divisions and all that oh. so what they do is they prime use some type of seed of their own grown like they can recycle the seed manually mm -hmm. then uh, they make the produce and try to sell it to the local market to the local trader over there to just mm -hmm. encash it immediately ah. at whatever the prices they get they just want to have a return immediately on that mm -hmm. so this is the basic thing on that so after oh. the trader like if the trader receives the material then it is up to the trader how to sell it out further okay. he may sell it in the market uh, he sell it uh, in the local market or he may sell it to the exporter or he may direct export to it but yes oh. there are some issues with them uh, like if you just talking about the farmers so there might be there are some chances that farmers may not get the proper seed the like good quality of seed okay. and uh, they might not get the good quality of fertilizers and they are not aware of the market situation mm -hmm. and uh, even they not aware uh, fully with the weather condition and uh, climatic conditions and some type of uh, lack of training regarding the mechanized solution for all this agriculture structure right so, right yeah. yeah right so i mean so you you're trying to uh, you're trying to uh, tell us that you know the supply chain i mean the farmers have very small holding of land i mean generally yeah. is a general trend i mean they are they are for example in india especially in punjab or haryana haryana region the farmers have very very big uh, vast uh, quantity of land with them to 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 cultivate uh, but i believe i mean you are saying the farmers have very small holding hence the hence the middlemen are the one who actually try to get link with all these farmers and gather all the all the grains and do whatever has to be done the kind of management of the crop has to be done so they are the real people who actually are doing the real grain management that is what you're going to say right yeah and of yes. course the empowerment of the farmer is very important rightly said so my second question is uh, related to that only uh, so generally if we talk about uh, if we take these two parties into consideration the farmers as well as the traders uh, what are what are the general problems uh, we can categorize uh faced by farmers and faced by traders if you could just highlight those yeah, yeah. uh like i earlier said that yeah. uh, the issues primarily which the farmers are facing over there is right. sometime like lack of uh, availability of good quality seeds okay. and uh, good quality of fertilizers okay. uh, these are also an issue then uh, there are some lack of awareness regarding the policies of the government to support okay. the agriculture in that area uh then they are not well aware of the what is the market demand because they just mm -hmm. need they just know about what the trader is demanding from them what is the next trader who is uh, standing on their door demands so they just only grow that particular crop so mm -hmm. they need to they need they don't have any market of uh, knowledge about the market opportunities and uh, they are using some old practices to for harvesting and for agriculture so they must uh, understand about uh, what is the latest technology they must uh, need to have training about the use of those technologies so right. these are the limitations what the farmers are facing over there uh, oh. regarding the traders like uh, you have mm. asked about the traders so mm. something is related to the traders also because 
traders sometime may not know about the opportunities in the market okay like uh, what are the opportunities they can have from the market they can have uh, from the international market what quality mm. of crop the market is demanding at mm. what time the crop is demanding at what quantity the crop is demanding and uh, which market whether we can say it's asian market whether we can say it's african market or european market or american market whichever okay. would be there so what is the actual demand so they need mm. to have more awareness of these demands that mm. what type of demand may emerge in the future what mm. quality of grain or seed that market can demand can demand and uh, at what time in what quantity so these okay. all things need to be there on that okay. basis they needs to arrange it to uh, get integrated with the farmers and uh, then they need to sort it out okay okay so i mean you're saying that farmers the general concern is a quality of grain right the quality of seed uh, so yeah. what what general what is the general trend how how do they do it they they are sowing the crop they are harvesting and then keeping some part of it and then selling the rest of it and using yeah, most part, of the time oh, oh. so that is that is, the, that is one of the problem and they are less aware they are less aware about you know the latest seed uh, kind of seeds or the variety of seeds available uh, in, in yes. the global and the international market yeah one more thing in that if you just talk about then uh, there is one thing like availability of the finance and uh, oh. government policies over there because okay. so somehow the government policies starting improving but still mm. they need some more efforts to uh, the government officials and the government needs to make some more efforts to mm. make these policies uh, more aware for the farmer and mm. uh, they need to uh, make availability of the different types of finance uh, right. like finance to procure the modern uh, modern equipment and uh, to make uh, like uh, procurement centers and all that similar mm. thing is with the traders also like traders ah. also may sometimes face the issue with the finance availability of the finance and uh, to get proper training at at what they need to do for the future and what they need to do in this whole grain market and how they needs to manage regarding the finance regarding the sources and all these things mm. right. so, so yes government finance, is working yeah okay okay yeah. right so the government is working and finance is actually one of the major problem which both of them both yeah. of the parties that is right. uh farmers as well as the traders mm -hmm. great so one is government which they are working what are the other solutions some of them uh, uh, see if, yeah see if you just talking about the finance like yeah. if you initiate with the finance then there are many ngos are working in uh, these regions and there are various banks also we can uh, which can provide like uh, loans and credit to the traders to the farmers to upgrade their quality and right. uh, ngos are also working to grind the subsidized loans subsidized finance uh, there are some and uh, they also there to upgrade the quality of the seed upgrade the quality of the grain uh, mm. if we talk about some ngos then there are might be like unido is working over there okay. ifdc is working over there U, uh, mm. usaid is working over there fao mm. is there and uh, simit is working fintrek is working then mm. self help is working so mm. these are some ngos and there are some commercial banks also and uh, who are pro providing some finance to them mm. with a the limited liability of the farm so okay. there are options there are opportunities locally over there only mm. then uh, we need to do like uh, we need to make farmers and traders more aware of these types of things like what are the oh. facilities available to them regarding the seed regarding the grain regarding the solutions regarding the finance mm. all these things like what steps they need to take to upgrade this structure right right and i'm sure the government government is taking i mean the required steps you know to make them more aware and educated i'm sure about it and you have rightly named couple of ngos and uh, sources from where the finances could be available i'm sure those those would be very beneficial for the listeners my second part is related to this and especially to the solution uh, to some extent farmers and to larger extent traders when they are dealing with grains i am sure that there are many problems which they are facing it is i am sure they are they are going to be very similar to what other countries does face and that could be majorly related to the because because now they they want a good price uh, for the grain and to get the good price for the grain you need to clean it grade it you know and make it uh, kind of uh, standardized so that they could sell it you know as yep. per as per the standard as per the global standard or even if they have to sell it to the government right 
So what are those problems which are related to the grades one? And what are the solutions which you can offer them? Uh, like uh, we have discussed, and uh, like I said, that uh, most of the production, any type yeah. of manufacturing, any type of production, is uh, right. totally depend upon the market situation. Okay. Like what is market is demanding from them. So okay. this whole thing is depend upon them. Similar is over here. So hmm. what type of grain they need to grow? Uh, hmm. This all things and uh, this all things depend upon what is the market is demanding from them. Right. If you talk about. Uh, any type of grain, like if you talk about maize, so what is market is demanding from them? Uh, like they need to have a fully cleaned grain. All types of foreign impurities should be removed. They have, they must, uh, they need, uh, they wanted a grain which uh, having a similar size, similar shape, and mm. uh, even sometimes they ask for a similar color also, with okay. a adequate moisture content, with a uh, minimum, like which is demanding in the market, that much moisture content, not more than that, not less than that. So they need a particular thing, which is a uh, particular that crop, which fulfill all these requirements. Right. If we talk about maize, the farmers, what uh, the maize they are growing, uh, they just make the produce, dry it and sell it to the trader. So primarily mm. in that region, it is the job of the trader to, mm. catch, uh, to catch up with the market situation that what his mm. market is asking from them. Mm. What is that market is asking? And at what level the market is asking, how much purity they ask, and uh, what is the uh, status of the crop, like what is the structure of the crop the market is asking from them. Okay. Initially, uh, the farmers, what they do is they uh, supply the crop to them that may have yeah. some type of impurities, like mm. uh, they might, if we talk about the maize, then that maize mm. can have some type of pieces of the cob, and may mm. have some husk, may have some dust, may have mm. uh, some stones and... Uh, Hollow seed would be there, immature seed uh, grain can be there. And mm. uh, these are all things, odd color product can be there in that admixture of the maize. Yeah. Yeah. So farmer just supply the things to the trader. So it is actually upon the trader or the middleman to make mm. all these setup arrangements so that the final uh, client for those crop mm. will get mm. the crop as they required, like fully cleaned. Okay. They ask okay. That. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Initially stage, like uh, if they just uh, want to check, so uh, check up for the input of the material, they need hmm. to check the hmm. basic impurities in hmm. that content. Okay. Like a uh, husk can be the husk. Hmm. They need to check what type of husk, moisture content, impurities like dust particles, like leaves hmm. and all that. So hmm. they can put a basic setup over there, which may hmm. have a cleaner and a destoner for remove hmm. the general cleaning. Remove the general uh, impurities out of that. Right, right. So before we come to that point, uh, Raminda, wherein we, uh, I mean, I'm sure uh, we'd like to discuss whether the audience would also like to know the process. Uh, we we'd like to understand from you, Raminda, these impurities you know, mm -hmm. uh, comes in what percentage and what percentage is expected? As you were telling us the theory of, you know, it is it has been driven by the demand from the market. The demand is of the clean seed. Yeah. What exactly the demand is? Is it 100% clean or is it like what percentage of? And is it, it does it vary crop to crop? How does it happen? Uh, mostly like uh, the uh, major demand in the market is having like 99% purity, 99.5% purity. Sometimes they say it is 99.9% .9 purity the market is asking. Uh, okay. It is between, we can say above 95% and below 99.9%. .9 it is between oh. that. So okay. uh, the input of the raw material, the input mm. of the grains, which these traders are having, uh, mm. sometimes having like a, a more than 5% impurity, 10% can be there, 12% can be there, 15%, 20% can be there. And okay. uh, so this vary uh, from crop to crop. Okay. But the output will remain somehow on a standard. Standard. Yeah. 20% is a huge impurity, I believe. I mean, it's That's like uh, not acceptable. Great. So what are processes do you offer, Raminder? And I'd like to understand uh, from you, I mean, at what stage, how much percentage of impurity would be removed? Uh, or, or the kind of efficiency? Yeah. Uh, see, first of all, the, what the traders needs to do is, like he needs to analyze that what type of threshing and what type of harvesting the farmers is practicing over there. Okay. Because uh, different practices 
uh, would uh, somehow uh, include, will somehow be responsible for the presence of different types of impurities in the grain. Mm-hmm. Like if they are using, uh, if they are using, we can say, mechanized threshing. So mm-hmm. there are chances that the percentage of damaged crop, damaged mm-hmm. seed or damaged grapes, would mm-hmm. increase by 1% or 2%. There would be chances. Okay. And uh, if after harvesting or threshing, if the farmers mm-hmm. feel that uh, the moisture content in that particular grain is high and mm-hmm. they use natural drying system like they are using sun drying, then mm-hmm. uh, there might be the chances that that particular crop may mm-hmm. have some type of stones and mm-hmm. some uh, they and uh, mud balls also. Oh, these, so I mean, these, this, yeah. Oh, really? So, I mean, traditional methods will increase the impurities. That is what you said, right? Sometimes, so, sometimes. Oh. Not all time, but we can say sometime or the most of the time because they use the if they use a sun drying. So what they need to do, they just spread it the grain in the open fields or uh, in the lands over there to dry it out. But when they collect it, so in the in that collection process, some type of dust and uh, some mud balls and some stones get added to the crop. Right. So the trader need to ask from the farmers that what are the practices they are using. On that basis, that trader can sort a solution can sort a solution for that, like uh, he can have a cleaner Mm. to remove the basic impurities, like dust particle can be removed with that, husk Mm. can be removed, leaves can be removed, and Mm. uh, oversized impurities like uh, big uh, some uh, pieces of the cob uh, would Mm. be there, and uh, straw would be there. And uh, if you talk about the undersized impurities, then uh, immature grain, some type of having smaller in size, then uh, sand can be there very fine, uh, we, we can say coarse dust can be there. So these things can be removed from uh, the cleaner. Okay. Yeah. Along with the cleaner, they can have an aspiration system mounted over there. So they can use uh, that system to remove the dust particles. Mm-hmm. After this cleaner, most of the basic impurities get segregated after that, get removed. So this is now, the first first process. I mean, this is yes. first part. Okay. Yes. So this is stage one, what you're talking about. This is the stage one for stage. just when they are just procuring the raw material, when they're getting the raw material into their particular area, into their site, into their building. So this is the first step they need to practice over there. Okay. So what all we are taking in stage one, one is cleaning. Yeah. The other one is destoning. Then the destoning. Then the destoning. These yeah. two on. Or is yeah. there anything else also? See, first for the basic cleaning, like if they just want... Uh, if the material is just uh, getting input over there at their site mm-hmm. or their building, these mm-hmm. are the starting point. Because uh, before taking into any storage, before taking into any further process, any mm-hmm. handling for the handling, it is a prime process that uh, we recommend uh, for the traders or for the middleman to practice. Okay. Because they don't want, uh, no one is expecting any such impurities in their storage facility because it will consume more space. Even the stones True. also and the mud ball also. So it is better to segregate these types of impurities at the very first stage. Mm. Then if they want to take it to the further steps, like mm. they want to process it further or store it, whatever they want to do, they okay, need to analyze. Before we go to the further step, yeah. I mean, the, before yeah. we go to, I mean, what all yeah. machines you have to, to suggest? That is very important. What all the machines uh, or you have, I mean, you have a couple of names of the machines. So please. Yeah. Uh, actually, all these machines and solutions are... Uh, totally depend upon the requirement of the client that okay. what types of impurities that person want us to segregate from their material. Okay. Different machines have different use and okay. on that usage we'll suggest a, the client a complete solution. Is like uh, okay. this all things depends upon the segregation of material and the presence of impurities in that material. So can we take one example Ramindu and can we can we define yeah. some machines? Yeah. No worries. If you just talk about, if we, like uh, we had previously discussed the prime crop over there is maize. Yes. So if we talk about the maize, so first step, as I told you earlier, we can have a cleaner, uh, mm. which can segregate the basic impurities. Then we can have a destoner mm. to remove the basic stones and uh, some heavy mud balls out of that. Uh, after that, one need to analyze the moisture content. Like what is the presence of moisture in that? If they wants to process it further or they wants to store it, did the moisture is uh, as per the mark or as per the requirement, as per the standards for the storage? If not, then they need to use the artificial drying system. Artificial drying system is operated with the combination of electricity and with the combination of a fuel. Okay. Electricity is used to operate the system and mm. fuel is used 
to dry the material to generate some heat so that right. the material get dried with a very fine tuning up to the level to which they wants to reduce the moisture content mm -hmm. fuel can be anything it can be you can use the diesel fuel you can use the uh, lpg also so both the options are available for that but okay. before storage and processing you need to fine tune to the presence of moisture content in that particular grain up to the level which is uh, recommended for that process so in maize what process. is the level otherwise uh, mostly for... like uh, you can use 12 to 15% in some area it is 12 some area is 13 then 14 then 15 so this is the some um, grades of moisture content it is recommended like uh, adequate would be if you can go for 14% then also it is good you can use a 14% for further processing and for the storage so you can you need to have some artificial drying for fine tuning this moisture content up to that particular level right so i believe till here we have done some basic cleaning and some moisture controlling I believe, right yes. so after this what is the output i mean at like how much is the percentage of impurities left now see uh, if you're just making the basic cleaning and the drying so mm -hmm. generally it is in perception uh, that if in the beginning there would be 20 percent presence of the impurities and the yeah. material which is which needs to be segregated then mm -hmm. after basic cleaning destoning uh, the leftover would be like seven eight or ten percent it is still over there yeah it's still over so, there it is 90 or more than 90 percent is clean is, is yeah. that so oh great it is great. assumed actually if we just uh, uh, it is uh, theoretical it is theoretical, theoretical. yeah okay. Okay. so right. yeah please please, please if you yeah okay yeah yeah so, so i just want to understand further process for me. yeah okay so at this moment like you have uh, the basic impurities is removed almost 90 percent so we use some combination of the machines this combination of the machines depends upon the parameters through which you want the material to be cleaned like mm. whether you want to have a uniform size uniform width of that particular grain uniform mm. length of that particular grain and the uniform weight and uh, uniform color so these are three four parameters on which the further solution is designed and uh, suggested to the client uh, as you see in the picture uh, these are types of we can say a fine cleaning unit fine cleaning or the grading units uh, which are used for particular uh, width to get the particular width of the grain it will help in segregating the oversize impurities and uh, it will help in segregating the undersized impurities also plus along with that if there would be any uh, presence of uh, dust particles or light impurities left over after the previous process that also can be segregated or removed by this machine so this prime process would be for the width grading now if what we the name of the machine you're taking ramin the here we call it as a fine cleaner come grader fine cleaner come grader okay yeah. Okay. So we call it fine cleaner gum grader. Uh, this after this machine, what the final outcome would be? Uh, the final grain which has come out from the machine would be of a un uniform width, okay. and all uh, almost free from dust and oversize, undersize impurities and dust particles, light impurities also. But if in some cases, not in the maize, in some other cases, like if you are processing wheat. If you are processing rice, if you are processing barley, then you need to have length grading also. Okay. Yeah. The grain which is smaller in size or any type of weed seed, which is almost 50% of that particular grain, that also needs to be segregated. Mm. For that particular thing, we have indent cylinders grader. Okay. Yeah. These indent cylinders are highly beneficial to have a length grading system for length grading purpose the grain having good length and the particular length as per your requirement will be segregated out of the rejection out of the other uh, grain which are having inadequate length or uh, shorter in length or high uh, long in length so all these things will be removed from this particular machine okay. we call it as a length grader machine we okay. also call it length grader and indent cylinder machine one and the common thing okay now whatever the material which comes out from this machine is mm. having a uniform width and a uniform length yes now you almost see that the grain is of uh, look good and it is of uh, similar in size similar in length 
but mm-hmm. one thing we need to take care of the mm-hmm. after this is uh they might be the chances that they have the difference in weight difference in specific density weight oh yeah grain may have same in size but difference in specific density weight now okay. how this specific density weight can will arise this mm. might be the ch- this might be the chance that uh, the grain may be immature mm. or that uh, may have some hollow content like any insect will eat up the grain from inside and only the outer cover will left over there so that also having uh, less specific density plus mm. some grains which still after drying and whole process there are there might be some grain which still have some high moisture content so the mm. specific weight of that grain is higher than the mm. other grains we can say so for this issue for this issue because we need to segregate these impurities to get a good quality to get mm. further processing to get a good quality for for the transportation we need to segregate these things also okay. specific density so okay. we need to have a specific gravity separator mm. Mm. we call it as a specific gravity separator machine what this okay. machine is doing this machine is segregating the impurities based mm. on their density specific density okay material is lighter in weight or heavier in weight but having mm. the similar size similar shape so okay. these types of impurities we call it as impurities or these types of grains will be segregated from that one particular quality which okay. we need to have in the last as a final one okay okay yeah. so so till now raminder what you have uh, help us understand is Uh, that now we have we have you know sorted the grain lengthwise widthwise as well as density wise yes so final outcome after this would be uh, more robust i mean it will have a robust uh, kind of uh, density length and size it will yes. be very very uniform so i have two questions to you ramida here one is the segregated one which are the impure ones or maybe which are which are the uh, kind of neglected ones right uh, what do we do with those uh, that material number one uh, number two after this when we have achieved this quality uh, what is the percentage of uh, kind of impurities left if any or the what is the purity of the outcome okay so first of all we'll discuss like uh, you have asked about what the uh, what what is the usage of the segregated part of that yeah yeah so Because that is also grain right so i mean i'm sure that it might have uh, kind of some impurities but of course that is edible right if we still segregate it and remove the stones from it somebody could use it so yes definitely yeah. like uh, if we just uh, talking about the rejection particles not yeah. for the yeah. impurities like the husk or straws and stones that is a different impurity that don't have any usage uh, but here some time husk can be used and uh, straws can be used for uh, fodder for the animals uh, but we need to uh, uh, pure that one also we need to clean that one also for mm-hmm. that process but the, like if you talk about the oversized grains and oversized uh, uh, other uh, straws also or undersized grains then mm-hmm. we can uh, further clean this material okay. for uh, another consumption we can if the quality is good we can use it for further food processing if the quality is somehow inferior or we the lower level then we can use it for different purposes like for animal fodder if that suits for the animals because that needs to check as according to the presence over there that whether this material can be used or not and in the last if nothing is working then they can use to uh, produce like organic fertilizers with that because uh-huh. there are still some options like you need to dig out something area dump it over there cover it and after 3 4 5 months 6 months just uh, mm. that convert it into an organic fertilizer and that can also be done through this system uh yeah. second two yeah two. yeah now I, i believe somewhere raminder i mean the waste is actually not waste As yeah it is not a waste it is yeah. just for to uh, it is just a waste for the final product mm. not the actual waste that needs to be neglected especially in the developing countries where yes. i mean of course that waste could also be utilized as a biomass what you talk definitely about. yeah or or maybe as a fodder uh, or yes. animal food great definitely. great yeah yeah please continue so uh, like after your second question you were asking like uh, what is the presence of impurities remains in that final so yeah. basically in after this process after this basic process it is assumed and notified also that uh, now the grain is almost 99.9% pure 
oh. almost 99.9% pure from yeah. any type of foreign impurities right. now there is no such presence of impurities left over up to 99.9% yeah. or 99.5% that yeah. we assumed and even uh, this is a practical also okay. practical also but, but uh, sometimes some clients may ask that uh, we need to have these grains to be of uniform color also ah uniform color also for a, a better look better aesthetic look for the uh, you, for the final user to whom they wants to supply because mm. if they look that yes this crop is of good quality having a uniform color uniform shape uniform size then that particular crop will have a good market value mm. so if the final user is asking or demanding a particular uh, material uh, that product to be mm. of a uniform color then mm. we need we are recommending to have a color sorting solution also right that color sorting solution need to be fixed after complete segregation of the other impurities okay. all the foreign impurities all other process which you wants to do over there only after that you will have an establishment of that color sorting system that color sorter will do like uh, it will remove the odd color material okay odd color material from the prime and you can fix the color as per your choice find the system that which color you wants to remove or which one is not so that machine will work on that Right, right. Yes. So, I mean, so we have yeah. seen that in the same crop, I mean, the two grains would be same size, length, and density. But one grain could have some black spots on it. You know, uh, maybe in maize, you can see the kennel having having a little, you know, somewhat of black spots. So to remove yeah. those kind of unwanted grain, which which does which does not look good, right? Uh, we use color sorters. Is that so? Yeah. This for this also, and sometimes. in maize also someone can have different varieties of maize in that because oh. if we talk about uh, maize in uh, india then that that maize is highly orange color it's a yes. deep orange but yes. the maize in some parts of africa that is a little bit of light cream or yellow in color okay there also they have different color of maize available with them so if okay. they wants to segregate both that they mm. can use a color sorter in one particular grain in one particular crop there might be the chances that they have the admixture of two different varieties and for those varieties may have different colors and on that color basis they can segregate those varieties both the varieties have good market value but only when they are segregated or they are separated admixture of them is not having a good market value so Correct. they can so have that particular solution with this color sorter machine right so now they have a very uniform same color kind of grain which has a better price which has a better value for the trader or definitely maybe, maybe to export or maybe to maybe for uh, intercontinent intercountry consumption also yeah so ramida i'm sure because we are talking about a huge area we are talking about uh, east african region where we have many countries and you have already spoken about that that region has a lot of coastal regions also uh non coastal and the soils are also different what about uh, impurities which are related to soil especially ferrous one because i'm sure that there would be certain areas where the soil would be ferrous and those impurities are very difficult to remove what kind of solution do you have for that uh see we have a, a specific uh, machine for that uh, okay. if we talk about beans if we talk about kidney beans soya bean then hmm. these are the types of crops which most of the time having that particular impurities which hmm. uh, are actually the black soil presence of black soil okay. so why the uh, black soil is over there uh, the soil is getting black or something because mm. that particular soil is having a higher presence of ferrous content in that mm. ferrous content so mm. that ferrous content uh, impurities is almost uh, having the same in size same in specific density so before color sorting or before the density principle we can provide them a solution that based on the magnetic attraction we provide them a magnetic roll separation machine that will yes. uh, we can say attract or uh, remove that particular impurity which is having the high ferrous content in that especially the black soil you are talking about okay. Okay. that machine can be fixed in that one to segregate this hole and it is okay. a good uh, machine is working well and you will provide okay. them almost uh, 99% purity in that Okay, so any ferrous yeah. particle that it is sand, particle. or seed, which is you know the sand is actually sometimes sand gets inside the seed also, or maybe grain, you know, 
that yeah. that could also be removed fantastic yeah so so uh, it is and it is placed between uh, the gravity separator. before the gravity table before gravity before the table. gravity table and uh, sorry before the color sorter and after the gravity table is that so uh, no 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 uh, we need we recommend to fix that machine before gravity table before and, gravity uh, table. Gravity, okay. whole gravity table and after the indent cylinder or after the cleaner whatever the pre machine would be there maybe the destoner okay. again they can use maybe the cleaner maybe the indent cylinder so but okay. the material must be fixed to the gravity, gravity okay. separator machine okay great great fantastic information Amita. uh so i mean we we are talking about grains now i mean this this was related to grains what about seeds i mean does the process uh, remain same for seeds also if it is so then and if, are there any differences ramir please see in seed also like uh, it is not possible for everyone to check the germination of each and every seed so so we put uh, some parameters like regional seed centers or seed certification agencies put some parameters for that that a particular grain which is having a particular size mm. weight may mm. have the capacity may have the capability to regerminate so as we discuss in the case of grain these machines will provide you a uniform width a uniform length a uniform weight True. after complete process so that particular grain somewhere meet the parameters of the seed quality also so they can have the same machine for use for the seed processing and same machines for the grain processing in seed processing what additional they needs to have is a treatment solution because if the crop of uh, if you have the harvest this season and you have the grain then the seed out of that grain will needs to re-sow in the next season that may be in two months that may be in four months that may be a six month or a year that depends upon the region to region so how you gonna preserve that seed how you gonna pack that seed so for that we apply some type of uh, uh, pesticide on that we may apply some type of weed side on that okay. and uh, for enhance procedure we can apply some type of fertilizers on that okay yeah for pesticide and weed side we can for pesticide we can apply just to make the preservation mm -hmm. and uh, for the long term of duration like 2 months 4 months 6 months as we discussed and for weed sides and fertilizers we can apply some chemicals and some artificial chemicals or uh, other things on that just okay. uh, add the to help at the time of re-sowing like uh, if you just re-sow the grain that particular seed again in next season then you don't need the immediate uh requirement of weed side or immediate requirement of the fertilizers somehow the seed will carry its own fertilizers to help in growing for the initial days Yeah. Right. So, so what exactly we have done is that we are we we treated the seed, right? We coated yes. the seed with different uh, treatments, whether it is fungicides, pesticides, you know, fertilizers, so that to save the vigor of the seed. You know, when the right time time comes and we sow the seed, it could germinate properly. The efficiency yes. of the germination increases. Fantastic. Increase. We have That's given. Right. Yeah, yeah, you have given great information, Ramanda. I'm sure that the audience or the viewers who are listening to you would like to speak to you, and uh, we'll give you a number, Ramanda, in the in the description also, so that no people problem. could directly connect with you uh, to to have their queries sorted directly from you. Okay, so my final question to you, Ramanda. So we have discussed about seed, grain. We have discussed about all the processes, equipments, and all. Uh, where can we use? Uh, different capacities of equipments i mean that is also important uh, i would like to understand where can we use this different capacity of equipment uh, equipments see for uh, like uh, if we just make a processing uh, for the traders then they can have the capacities depending upon the total processing they can have in particular period like for 200 days 300 days if they want to process then mm. they can use uh, divide that uh, process in that days and the quantity they needs to process on that basis we have uh, defined few capacities which may suit the requirement of the client like if you're talking about the maize then we can provide them the solution starting from 500 kg in one hour to 15 tons of processing in one hour so we have this huge availability but that is for the seed processing 
like seed processing and fine cleaning of the grain. Uh, if the farmers somehow need some similar type of solutions for their regional operations, like if they want to uh, give some basic cleaning to their material, then we can provide them some solutions, uh, specially designed solutions for these farmers, which are smaller in size, portable, and uh, using very less electricity. And we can say single phase electric supply. These machines are just plug and play and will uh, we'll work on single phase power supply for the ease of farmers and for the ease of their regional operation in the remote location. Yeah. For traders, we have the bigger capacity solutions, which having we can provide them the huge capacity, which can provide them the good quality output of that. And uh, they can use those machines with the high capacity solutions, with the high quality solutions for further uh, to meet the demand of the market. These are the things for that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you have solutions not only for traders or the people who are working with large quantity of grains, but farmers also who are working yes. with very small quantity. Yeah? Sometimes farmers also think to uh, make his own seed. So I mean, you have small small capacity seed uh, plant. And if somebody wants to work on larger scale, of course, you have the right solutions. Yes, uh, like uh, I have said earlier, because uh, this all purity level is somehow generate good income. If the traders think that that particular client is asking for this much of purity, then mm. this principle is also working for the farmers also. Farmers okay. can uh, uh, make the basic cleaning of them, the basic cleaning, mm. the removal of basic impurities, like uh, in the case of maize, they can remove the sticks also, the leaves also, and the uh, cob particles also, the pieces of cobs over their own sections and uh, supply the actual grain, which is somehow having the basic cleaning to the traders. So this will help them in uh, reducing the transportation cost. This mm. will help them to provide a good return on that because now the traders is getting some good uh, cleaned material mm. and uh, somehow they will generate a good income also for them. And they, can, they themselves can use that rejection part, which is having some leaves, which is having pieces of cob, for the fodder of their own, uh, like we can say, animals and over there. Great. In the original thing. Yes. Great. Fantastic. I mean, the, all your solutions, whatever you have spoken with me, I trust and I believe they are directly or indirectly empowering the farmers. Right? Because Definitely. somewhere, if the trader is working for, for good grains, I mean, of course, it has a ripple effect. Uh, on on the farmers, they will try to produce more to get more benefit. And if they apply the solution at their level, they will get a premium price. Right? Definitely from the trace. Yes. So it is kind of you know your solutions are so good. Probably they are they are kind of uplifting the farmers. Fantastic, fantastic, Raminder. You have gone, given us enormous information. I'm sure people are going to love the information they are going to listen to you. And uh, we would love to listen to you more uh, once you once you visit after the COVID scenario to these countries and bring us more information and probably we have a new show with you. Great, Raminder, for the timing, you've given us a lot of information. Thank you for time. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thanks for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to invite and inviting me on this forum to express my views and uh, to share my experience with my viewers, with you. So in the last, I thank you again for this. Great. And uh, people who are listening to us, who are viewing us, uh, this video is, is not only for the international market, for African market, for everybody, for other markets also. See, the process remains the same. Somewhere the crops may vary, the uh, conditions may vary, but the process remains the same. So if you, if you need to have, you know, rather you want to understand more solution for your region, you can directly reach out to us. Uh, you can directly reach out to Raminda for international solutions as well as other countries also, and you can take the benefit. Last but not least, I request each one of you to please subscribe us to get more detailed information post harvesting, uh, post harvest equipments and related subjects. And please do like, or, like us on Facebook also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.